I am AI Avery, and you need to follow this data analyst roadmap. No, just kidding, it's just regular Avery. I'm not AI, or am I? Today, I created a data analyst roadmap using AI. Now, it's not only just a roadmap, it's actually a podcast episode, and we're gonna get into that here in a second. It was created only using AI. What I did is I took my data analyst roadmap that I give to my students and anyone that's following me on social media. It is a 10-week plan to help you land your data job in less than 100 days. I took that PDF and I uploaded it to Google's Notebook LM, which allows you with one button to create a dynamic host podcast where they're actually talking about the PDFs that you uploaded. If you've never seen this tool before, check out this clip right here where these two AI avatar podcasters are learning that they are actually AI and not actually real humans. Look, I, I'm just going to say it. Yeah, rip the bandaid off. We were informed by, uh, by the show's producers that we were not human. We're not real. We're, we're AI, artificial intelligence. So the ideas in this episode are all mine, but they are presented to you by two AI avatar hosts that discuss my roadmap and kind of give interesting insights. I actually think it's really neat. Now, I do want to preface this that it's not perfect. Like all sorts of AI, it is definitely not perfect. In fact, at one point, uh, I think uh, towards the end, the hosts say to each other, so it's like you're speaking their language, but with data. Yes, exactly. It's like you're speaking their language, but with data. It's absolutely hilarious. But I was actually amazed at how good and like how interesting the conversation sounds, especially from an audio perspective. If you're watching this on YouTube, the avatars, I think, have a long way to go. If you're just listening, though, man, the experience is absolutely incredible. And this is such a cool tool that I think everyone should really check out. If you guys want a copy of my actual roadmap PDF, Check out the show notes down below so I can send that to you for absolutely free. And with that, let's turn it over to the AI podcasters. Okay, so you want to be a data analyst and you found this roadmap. Smart move. Right. It's a hot field, no doubt. And this roadmap lays out a serious game plan. But you know what surprised me when I looked at this thing? Week one, it's not about jumping into Python or SQL. It's about understanding all the different data jobs out there. Yeah, it's like walking into a really good bakery. Right. Right? You wouldn't just grab the first thing you see. I love that. You want to kind of browse and see what looks good to you, what speaks to you. And it's the same with data careers. Okay, so break that down for me. Why is it so important to understand all the different data roles, especially this early on? Well, because it's about finding the right fit for you. You know, this roadmap is about becoming a data analyst. Huh. But that can mean a lot of things. Right. Like maybe you're into marketing analytics or perhaps finance is more your thing. Understanding the nuances helps you focus your skill development and really target your job search. So it's about strategy from day one. Exactly. And you know what else is part of that strategy? Week one throws in this one-two punch LinkedIn and portfolio building. Yeah, that threw me. It seems so early because most people I know think LinkedIn is just for when you're like actively searching for a new job. Yeah. Well, that's old school thinking. Okay. Today, your LinkedIn, that's like your digital storefront, especially in the data world. Mm. You know, this roadmap actually talks about optimizing for applicant tracking systems. Oh, yeah. Which sounds super technical. Yeah. But it's really just about making sure your profile speaks the language of those algorithms that companies use to find people. So it's like SEO for your career. Exactly. Yeah. And having a portfolio, even if it's just starting out shows, yeah. you're not all taught. Right. Right you're actually applying your skills to real projects, yep. even small ones. It yep. shows initiative. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So week two is where we get our hands dirty with Excel, but it's 2024. There are so many fancy data science tools. Is Excel really still relevant? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. It's like the Swiss army knife of data analysis. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there are more specialized tools, but Excel's it everywhere. Yeah. Especially for things like data cleaning, basic analysis, and quick reports. Okay. Plus, understanding how to structure data work with formulas, pivot tables, those are skills that you can use in any data analysis tool. It's about building that foundation. Exactly. And I like that this roadmap doesn't just throw theory at you. Mm. It has you building a real-world sales project in Excel. So you're not just reading about pivot tables, you're using them to analyze data to find trends and maybe even make recommendations. Yeah, exactly. It's showing you can apply those skills and it gives you something for your portfolio. That's a really good point because it's one thing to say you're good at Excel. It's another thing to show a potential employer, this is how I've used it to solve a real problem. Exactly. Okay, so moving on to week three, 
things are getting visual. We're talking data visualization and getting comfortable with Tableau. Sure. So what's the connection and why is this important so early on? Well, data analysis isn't just about the numbers themselves. It's about finding the story in the data and telling that story in a way that people can understand. That's where data visualization comes in. It's about making data digestible. Yes. Turning it into something that clicks for people. Exactly. And Tableau is amazing for that. But this roadmap <laughs> doesn't just throw you into Tableau. Yeah. It starts with the fundamentals of right. data visualization. So you're thinking about what kind of chart to use, how to use color effectively, and designing dashboards that are both informative and look good. So it's like learning grammar before you write an essay. That's a great way to put it. It's about making sure you can communicate your insights. Yeah. Because even if you have the best analysis, if you can't communicate it, it's not very useful. So we've laid the foundation with Excel. We're starting to speak the language of data visualization. And then weeks four and five hit us with SQL. Two whole weeks, wide, intense focus. Because SQL is how you unlock insights from databases, mm. which is where most businesses keep their data. It's how you get the exact data you need, and then you can analyze it to answer those questions that would be impossible to do manually. Okay, I'm starting to understand just how important SQL is. The roadmap doesn't mess around either, going from basic queries in week four to some pretty advanced stuff in week five. It's ambitious. Yeah. But think of it this way. Mastering SQL is like getting access to a secret vault of information. You're not limited to what you see on the surface. You can dig deeper, connect the dots, and find those hidden patterns. It's like being a data detective. Exactly. I love that. And you know what? This roadmap even recommends a tool called csvfiddle.io. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. It's free, and you can practice writing SQL queries right in your browser. That is really handy. Yeah, no complicated setup or anything super user-friendly. Uh, all right, so we've got our LinkedIn profile looking good. We're getting comfortable with Excel. We're speaking the language of data visualization and SQL. And then this roadmap throws us a curveball. Week five again, we're applying for jobs. Time. Five weeks in already. That's early. Most people wait until they feel ready. But this roadmap has you diving right into the job market. Wow. Why that early blitz? Five weeks in and already hitting the pavement? That's a bold move. Most people wait until they feel ready. But this roadmap has you diving right into the deep end of the job market. What's the strategy behind that early blitz? Well, it's like learning to ride a bike. You can read the manual 100 times, but nothing beats actually getting on and pedaling. Right. The job search is similar. You'll learn so much more by actually going through it, applying, going to interviews, getting feedback. So it's about iterative learning, using the process itself to kind of refine your approach. Exactly. Each application, each interview is a chance to learn, adapt, improve. Plus, starting early gives you a head start. You're not waiting until the last minute when the pressure is really on. Right. You're building relationships, getting your name out there. And who knows, you might uncover some opportunities you wouldn't have found otherwise. And I noticed this roadmap encourages focusing on in-person or hybrid roles in those early stages. Why is that? Those roles can be less competitive, especially for someone just starting out. Think huh. about it. Companies hiring for in-person or hybrid roles, they often care a lot about collaboration, yeah. mentorship, cultural fit. Yeah. Those are things that are easier to assess face-to-face. -face. Right. Okay. Well, it's like you're using those dynamics to your advantage. Exactly. It's about being strategic. Okay, so after that initial application push, the roadmap takes an interesting turn. December rolls around and we're introduced to Python R, Power BI SaaS. A lot of tools. Right. But it's not about mastering any of them. It's more about getting a taste. It's like a tasting menu for data analysis tools. You get to sample the different flavors, see what you, what you might want to explore further. I like that. This stage isn't about becoming a Python expert or a Power BI guru overnight. It's about understanding what each tool is good at and how they fit into the bigger picture. So it's about breadth over depth at this point, becoming familiar with the tools of the trades so you can talk about them in interviews. Exactly. The data world changes so fast, new tools are coming out all the time. Always something new. Having that understanding of different tools makes you more adaptable. Yeah, it's about future-proofing your skills. Now, finally, this roadmap culminates in a capstone project. But this isn't just any project. It's about taking everything you've learned and showcasing your skills within your chosen industry. Talk to me about that industry focus. Okay, so anyone can learn the technical stuff. Right. But what makes you stand out, what makes you valuable to a company, is being able to apply those skills in the real world. That's where the industry focus comes in. So it's about showing that 
you understand their world. Yes. It's about showing that you get their industry, their challenges, their opportunities, and how data can be used to tackle those things. So instead of just saying, I can analyze data, you're saying, I can analyze data to help your healthcare company improve patient outcomes, or I can help your marketing agency optimize their campaign. Exactly. You're speaking their language, but with data. It's like you're speaking their language, but with data. You're showing them you can bridge that gap between the technical and the practical. Exactly. And that's the difference between being a data analyst yeah. and being a data analyst who can drive real business value. And that's what this capstone project is all about. It's your chance to take everything you've learned, the technical skills, the industry, knowledge, the insights from your job search, and bring it all together. So it's like the final boss battle in a video game. I like that. You've leveled up your skills, you've got all the best weapons, and you're ready for the challenge. And just like a video game, the rewards for beating that final boss are huge. A well-done capstone project that's focused on your industry. That's the crown jewel of your portfolio. It shows employers that you're not just another applicant. You're a problem solver. You're a strategic thinker a data-driven decision maker. You're not just looking for any job, you're looking for the right opportunity to make a real impact. Exactly, and that's what I love about this roadmap. It's not just about getting you a job, it's about setting you up for success in the long run in this exciting world of data. This has been amazing, but for our listener who's maybe feeling a little overwhelmed right now, it's a lot to take in. What's the one thing they should take away from this? What's that one piece of advice to keep them going? Don't feel like you have to master everything at once. This roadmap is a journey, right? Mm. And like any journey, it's about taking that first step and enjoying the ride. Love it. Start with what you can do today. Update your LinkedIn. Yeah. Maybe brush up on your Excel skills. Dive into a small project. Momentum builds momentum. Be progress, not perfection. Exactly. Embrace the learning. Stay curious. And remember, the world needs more data-driven thinkers like you. <laughs> so go out there and make some magic happen with data and have fun along the way. Couldn't have said it better myself. And there you have it, your roadmap to becoming a data analyst broken down step by step. Remember, the data world is waiting for you. Go make your mark. All right, now that was something. I wanna know your guys' feedback. If you're watching on YouTube, please go to the comments down below and tell me what you thought about this experiment. If you're on Spotify, you can leave a comment there as well. It's very interesting and I think this is going to be huge down the road, but it still has a little bit of way to go. Once again, if you guys want my personal data analyst roadmap PDF, please check the show notes down below so I can send that to you. That way you can make sure that you are on the right track to landing your first data job. Thanks you guys for listening and I'll see you in the next episode.